For being aware in the instant from this and other information don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Former South Sudanese rebel leader Riek Maka has been sworn in as first vice president, sealing a peace deal aimed at ending six years of civil war. President Salva Kiir witnessed the moment at a ceremony at the State House in the capital, Juba. It is hoped that the new unity government will bring an end to the conflict that has killed about 400,000 people and displaced millions. However, previous deals were widely heralded only to fall apart. Saturday's ceremony took place just before the deadline for an agreement expired. I do hereby swear that I shall be faithful and bear diligence to the Republic of South Sudan, Mr. Maka said in his oath. He then embraced and shook hands with President Kaya. Also present at the ceremony was the leader of Sudan, General Abdel Fattah al Buran. Under the agreement, the current cabinet has been dissolved to make way for more opposition members. Correspondents say some issues remain unresolved including power sharing and the integration of rebel fighters but the two sides have agreed to form a government and address other matters later. The deal was announced hours after the UN released a damning report accusing both sides of deliberately starving civilians during their struggle for power. What's the significance of the agreement? President Kair has expressed hope that the transitional three-year period will pave the way for refugees and internally displaced people to return to their homes. In addition to those killed or displaced, many others have been pushed to the brink of starvation and faced untold suffering. If the deal holds, it could herald a fresh start in the world's newest country. South Sudan Timeline. What is the fighting about? South Sudan became an independent state from Sudan in 2011, marking the end of a long-running civil war. But it did not take long for the promise of peace to crumble. Just two years after independence, the country returned to violent conflict after President Kaya sacked Maka, then the deputy president in December 2013. President Kaya had accused Mr. Maka of plotting a coup to overthrow him, which Mr. Maka denied. While the war had political origins, it also has ethnic undertones and is based on power dynamics. The Dinka and Nua, South Sudan's two largest ethnic groups, which the two leaders belong to, have been accused of targeting each other in the war, with atrocities committed by both sides. Why has it been so hard to strike a deal? Parties had been unable or unwilling to agree on the terms for the formation of a transitional government, in line with the revitalized peace agreement of 2018. The deal was supposed to have been finalized by May 2019 but was postponed twice, the latest deadline being the 22nd of February. The conflict has pushed the country into a catastrophic humanitarian crisis. Despite the situation, it has been difficult for the parties to reach and maintain a peace deal tar. T could stabilize the country. The two main leaders have a mutual distrust of each other and there has not been a cordial working relationship since President Kaya fired Mr. Maka in 2013. Mr. Maka has never returned permanently to the capital, Juba, fearing for his safety. He fled the country when his forces were engaged in fierce clashes with government troops as the 2016 peace agreement collapsed. What is life like in South Sudan? It is pretty bleak. The International Monetary Fund IMF, ranks the country as the poorest in the world by GDP per person. Much of the country is not developed in terms of infrastructure. It has, for instance, just about 300 kilometers, 186 miles, of paved roads in a country that stretches more than 600,000 square kilometers. Most parts of the country outside the urban centers have no electricity or running water.